My name is Ilaria Cruz. I'm a linguist and a native speaker of this language called Chatino, which is spoken in Oaxaca, Mexico. Uh, today, I wish to extend my gratitude to the organizers of this specific workshop, but I also want to extend a gratitude to the ELDP, Mandana is here, and to SOAS, because uh, you guys have, over the years since 2015, have um, funded the, the documentation of the Chatino language, and for the same reasons, uh, here at, um, at SOAS, we have a large collection, actually, of the Chatino language. Like, for example, I just today went out and just did a quick Google search of the Chatino language, and look at all of these, you know, that we have. We have, um, we have a large collection right here at SOAS of spoken language, but also sign language. So, one of the dreams that I have is acquired uh, technology so that we, we can transcribe all of this data so that it could be to, for use for uh, native speakers, for making books on the Chatino language, for schools, but also for materials for linguists and artists and anyone who, who wants to to use this this language, so I'm very very grateful for that. So I I, I feel that um, there is a part of Chatino, and I'm 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 grateful for that to to be to be here. So this is the the second time that I come back to to SOAS. So it's a, it's an awesome institution. So let's see. Um, So today, one of the things that I would like to do is to talk about some of the um, uh, quests that I have gone through to, um, to acquire ASR for the Chatino languages. Um, so we, we know, we know that, um, that ASR right now is becoming very, very prevalent everywhere you go, right? Like you have Alexa, you have Google, so you talk to them. But we know that this technology is mostly available for major languages, such as German, Spanish, Japanese, um, all of these um, languages. But it seems like um, there is no a lot of resources for endangered or minority languages. So when I began to do this work, um, I was, you know, I was also learning how to, to transcribe the language myself. So I was learning how to read and write in the Chatino languages as I was writing my dissertation at the University of Texas. So what happened there was that nation states, in their efforts to, uh, to bring everyone together, um, they just did not have any funding for studying indigenous languages. Like in the 1940s, um, members of, uh, of the Sommer Institute for Linguistics, which are, uh, there were two people from also from here, from England, who were in the Chatino regions. So the only, um, one of the few, some of the few things that we know about indigenous language in, in Mexico were work that were done by the people from, um, from the SIL. And they were not, uh, the members of the SIL were not doing this work for um, altruistic purposes or because they wanted to know of the language. I mean, many, some of them who were linguists wanted to know about the language, but their main goal was to be able to translate the Bible. So um, the Mexican government, government did not allocate any funding for research on these languages. So people like me, I did not know how to speak the Spanish language until I was eight years old. And then when I went through school, I went, I had, um, I acquired literacy through um, completing immersion in these languages. So, so then when I 
uh, got older, I, be, uh, I questioned why is it that I know how to write um, Spanish, I know how to write um, English, but I don't know how to represent the sounds that I have in my mind about the Chatino language. Um, in Chatino, like the Tenal languages, are, have very unique sound systems and consonant systems that you do not have if you are trying to use uh, the Spanish alphabet to be able to represent these languages. So like for example, here we have some um, consonants that have um, laminal sounds, like for example, da, corn, ti, paper, ti, frog. In this, um, in this slide, we also see that, um, that we have uh, glottal stops as well. Which is the glottal stop is something that we represent with the Q. Um, so we were trying to use the alphabet of the Spanish language, but the Spanish language we know does not have laminal sounds, they don't have um, glottal stops. Um, also, we have um, lots of um, nasal sounds, just like French, right? But um, let's see. I also, I also talk about uh, the glottal stops there, we, e, ho. As you can see, we have a language that has a, um, a lot of glottal stops. So um, we were trying to use the, the Spanish alphabet to represent all of these sounds that you don't have. So then, um, also like the non-languages that um, Alexa was talking about, the Chatino language is very monosyllabic, and we also have a large system of tones. We have um, 12 contrasts of tones. So I'm just gonna give you this little um, group. For example, we have que, 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 que. So in, in this one, uh, it has the little elongation as well. So that will be, uh, his head will be K, and then deal with it will be K. Um, you know, I, I think that there is a small distinction in there, but, um, but anyhow, so I, this is just to give you a little example of some of the things that we were trying to represent in the Chatino language. So if you don't have any, any research in this language, and, and if you are trying to represent your language, then what is it that you do? So we, um, we were dealt with a lot of the service by the Mexican na nation state, and by any means, any settler colonial state has done the same thing with, uh, with indigenous languages. So then what is it that you do? Uh, luckily, I began to hear about um, Native American communities in the United States who were working with linguists to recover their languages. Their, these, language, these, these linguists were working with, um, with these native speakers, going back into the files, and maybe even uh, reviving some of these languages that ceased to be spoken for even 100 years. So then I thought, wow, well, you know what? I think the linguists could help us uh, represent our language. Because what happens is that there were some proposals for, for how to, to represent these languages, but if you wanted to read these languages back, if you don't have uh, a good orthography, an orthography that represents all the phonemes in the language, it's very difficult to read, to be able to read these, langu these languages. So what we wanted was, if we were wanted was an alphabet that could represent the sound uh, systems of the language and something that was easy for us to read back and hopefully use it for uh, you know teaching others so we needed a system like that so um so this is how i began to do um linguistics because i wanted all i knew about linguistics at the time was that i i wanted to to get a writing system for the chatino language so then um so as we continue doing our work, we, uh, we, we, we became acquainted with the literature of endangered languages, which was very uh, invigorating for us. 
And then, so we have, um, so we did, uh, um, we have done many years of language documentation in all different contexts. Like for example, the corpus that we have here, as I was saying before, at here at SOAS. So we have, um, we have formal uh, conversations, we have um, uh, everyday conversations, like we have these uh, kitchen conversations. Um, so we have a really large collection of data, and it's very rich, and we have women, men, and I, I don't know if we even have some children conversation as well. So, so we have that richness. Um, so then, so then uh, Lina Hu, when, when she began to document the um, the sound, uh, the, the sign language in San Juan Quiaije, in my community, she asked me to, to help her transcribe um, the, uh, the recordings that she was getting, uh, the conversations that she was uh, getting from talking to uh, families. So then I began my transcription for her. I have done mine as well, but uh, when I began to do to work and really in earnest to do the transcriptions for her, I just just found myself like you know like getting back aches, get, getting carpal tunnel, getting uh, I, I was just like tired of um, of writing the same thing over and over again. Like for example, the word cha in Chatino, cha, and I was thinking. Well, what the heck with this? I mean, you know, right now we have this, you know, like uh, advanced uh, technology for, you know, um, speech recognition. Why is it that I cannot have something that could just write chat for something? Like, could just write a few things, right? Something, you know, I just need some help. So then I began to, uh, to ask around on, on Facebook, of all places. Uh, I said, hey, what can I do to... Um, uh, to get an ASR for Chatino. So people began to say, well, you know, uh, you need a really large collection, you know, you need a lot of data. Um, so then um, uh, there was this, uh, this effort, right? Like, were you part of Arbark? Yes. Yeah, okay. So there was, there was this group of people, um, there were phoneticians and um, um, computational linguists, and they were complaining that they could not use the large collection of indigenous languages or endangered languages in the archives, so just because uh, they, they needed, they would like to use uh, some of these data for their model. Um, uh, but then they were saying that, you know, the majority of these languages in these language archives did not have transcription, which is which is right. So then they began to meet, and it happened uh, for uh, you know that I was lucky when they were meeting that I just went and raised my hand. Yes. Okay. So what do I need to do? How many hours would I need to you know to work transcribe so that you can begin a system? Um, so at the time, people could not answer that. I mean, it's just the same thing. Like, for example, Madonna is asking the same questions. Okay, so tell me with detail how many hours would I need? What, what are some of the steps? Some easy steps that I can do in order to begin this effort. And it seems like nobody knew at the time. So then, um, um, there I met some people from Linguist List. And then the people at Linguist List says, well, you know, I think that you can do, you can do it with 10 hours. So then I went to, um, I went to, to the basement um, of, um, of Linguist List. And then what I did was I, I took some text and I respoke this text. And then so we put this text on, um, Open. We offer it as an open source. It is, it is out there. It's, I think that we acquired 3.8 hours of, of this text. And these were the texts that, um, that Oliver and Alexa used to, uh, to compare with the Na language. Okay, so, so I actually I do continue to ask the same question, you know, because I have, I, I, I don't have these, um, these answers yet. I, I do have some of them. 
So, so I continued to ask this question, and then I began to do a, a fellowship at, um, at Dartmouth College. And there, I wanted to, uh, to find you know, um, uh, people over there in uh, Dartmouth College who were working on you know, uh, computer science. I know that they have a huge computer science um, out there. But to my surprise is that uh, there was no one who was doing uh, NLP at Dartmouth College, I, so I could not find um, anyone there. And then um, the linguistics department had been trying to hire a computational linguist as well, but um, they, they could not hire anyone at the time when I was there. So then the Newco Foundation said, uh, you know, that was sponsoring my fellowship, said to me, well, why don't you have a little conversation? How about retreat? Bring people so they can have this conversation. So, so I, um, so I got the funding to get the retreat, and then Oliver and and I began to um, just you know began to have, to have all of these conversations. So they, so a lot of people came to this uh, to this retreat. So we had this weekend. We had a wonderful weekend. Did you enjoy it, Oliver? <laughs> yes. So it was a very informal gathering, you know, where we got together, we went out sightseeing, we ate uh, good food, and we just kind of sat down in a very informal setting in a house where we just, you know, had these conversations. Okay. Uh, basically, we were just kind of getting to know the different cultures of all of these different work people working in these fields. And this is... Uh, so I got some, you know, some of my answers in there. So one of the things that we found out right here, so we had, we have linguists, we have um, uh, language activists, and, uh, and we have computer science. And um, so one of the things that I found out there was that we just did not know about each other a lot. I mean, a lot. So then, um, what else? What else did that we did we do for that? Uh, um, um, oh, well, I got a better sense of um, how different people's linguistic workflows work because prior to that, my conversations were largely with a small set of people, such as Alexi. So I got a better sense of the variability that's in there and the different types of data people have available. Yes. Um, another thing also is that um, I, I feel that right now the literature that is emerging from this um, from this work from um, you know technologies for endangered languages is not taking into account uh, native speakers like myself who um, who are doing um, uh, language documentation, but also a lot of native speakers are right now are beginning to get trained. In linguistics, and um, many of us really are, are, you know, have this, you know, are ready. We 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 want these tools to be able to uh, to help us do the transcription. But the problem that I see here is that there is not a lot of continuity. Like for example, you know, we met with Oliver at the um, um, at the retreat, but then you know, like we you know we communication did not continue. I'm very happy that I you know see you guys today. And, and we have, and we hope that we can continue this. But also, um, I, I see that there is a lot of hiring in, um, in in different linguistics departments in universities. There, everyone is trying to hire a computational linguist. Everyone. But in this quest, I have realized that um, many, um, the majority of computational linguists are not interested in. Um, Problems of NLP, and uh, you, you might, you, well, uh, you, you might be the exception. And hopefully, there is, a, and hopefully, there is, a, you know, hopefully there will be more people who are interested. And then I've been talking to chairs of different departments, people in linguistics department. And they said, why don't, and I asked them, well, why don't you hire an engineer who does NLP? And they said, no, 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 we won't do that because we, uh, we don't want to hire anyone who does not have a background in linguistics because they have to teach all of these, you know, really basic linguistics courses. And, and on the same way, 
um, I, I see that uh, programs that do a lot of NLP, like Carnegie Mellon, like in, in engineering programs, they don't have linguists as well. So, so I think that the, we need to have some more conversations. We, we, you know, like these departments, like for example, CMU, Carnegie Mellon, they have a wonderful lab there, but I don't see a lot of continuity as well. So it would be wonderful if there were, um, if there was a scholarship that um, to support um, a native speaker to go there one or two years and um, and work. Uh, work there, so you so you'll see more continuity in there, and and if I was a chair of a linguistics department, I will hire a, a person with an LP background, even if they didn't know linguistics. But I'm not there yet, so um, so there are, uh, so there are many things that we still need to do, even just kind of hash out some little you know even cultural issues for how to do these things. I think that with computational linguistics, with, uh, with, document, with documentation, we have um, done some of this work. Like for example, uh, when with our uh, documentation of the Chatino language, uh, we have this very synergistic group where we had some linguists like Anthony Whitbury, and there will be native speakers like us, and then we did a few work together, and we were all very committed to this, and I see more, more and more right now uh, documentation uh, programs where you have these collaborations, very uh, wonderful collaborations. Actually, right now, I see more and more people are beginning to see that if you are um, are a linguist, and if you are going to go and do field work with communities, that uh, you are doing it in conjunction with community members. I think that this is something that we need to start um, pushing for people who are um, uh, computer science to do um, if we want to um, move forward in this, um, in this conversation for how to acquire uh, technology for endangered languages. What do you guys think? 